We're excited to head up to Crystal Mountain Resort and Spa for some great food, relaxation, and fun in the snow. Crystal Mountain is one of the premier places to stay in northern Michigan, so we were so blessed to be able to get to spend a few days there. There was so much to see when Casey and I arrived at Crystal Mountain. So we took a quick walk around before meeting Abby, who helped show us the ropes. Abby was kind enough to set up the week for us at the number one resort in the Midwest. Casey and I were so excited. I love walking in the snow and that that special crunch, that sound you get underneath. It's pretty neat. Now we had every intention of heading straight to our rooms, but we couldn't help ourselves when we saw a frozen pond. Our inner skaters came out, and I think we were very graceful. Casey and I may have gotten a little distracted by cute shops and pretty things along the way. Crystal Mountain has so many different types of lodging and they put us up in a bungalow, which is really another word for a cabin at the base of a mountain where lots of people ski, snowboard. So it's a very, very cool picture when you wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee and you see people just zipping down the hill. We heard how amazing the bungalows were, so Casey and I were so excited when we finally arrived. I've got to say, there's no better feeling than walking into a warm bungalow on a cold winter day. There's a story of a very interesting woman found in Proverbs 31. And I think as women we're all a little bit afraid or skeptical of this because here is, is this woman who seems to have it all together. And then we look at our own lives and it's like, how are we supposed to live up to this standard set by her? But don't worry, we're going to kind of walk through it. Now this story isn't normal. We don't know her name, her age where she's from, but what we do know are character traits. We know that she's a hard worker. We know that she takes care of her family. We know that her husband has confidence in her. We know that she is smart and talented, but we know above all 
that she fears the Lord, and she puts more stake in the internal things, in matters of the heart, over any earthly thing out there. To the Proverbs 31 woman, leading a godly life, taking care of others, those are the things that are most important. Of all the activities we have planned at Crystal Mountain, there's one that I'm really looking forward to. Dog sledding. To be honest, I didn't know much about dog sledding other than what I've seen in the movies. And based off of the movies, it looked amazing. And so I was so excited to be able to go dog sledding while here at Crystal Mountain. So we pull in, and here's Michelle, our musher. And here she's got all these dogs, and they're so cute. They're just these cute little doggies. And we get out there, she hooks them up, and it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. sled pulled by dogs is this very surreal moment. You're being pulled by a bunch of dogs. It's incredible. But you have the wind blowing, you get to take in the scenery, very fun. I'd definitely do it again. so much fun. You're going to love it. You're gonna was it awesome? It. it was. Oh, I can't wait. Thank you. Do I get the hat? Oh, I need the hat. You got to If there's anybody out there who likes dogs, you would have been in heaven. It was so great being around all the dogs, getting to love on them, have them kiss our faces. I had such a good time. It was very apparent to us that Michelle loved her dogs and took great care of them. She was so sweet, so kind, very gentle. She even let us give the dogs treats and give them water with special protein in it so that they kept up their energy. Here you get well okay. that's why we'll they feel the love from both of us. Oh. Did you get it? Yep. You want another drink? You want another drink? Good job. Those dogs were great. I loved getting to spend time with them and pet them and get to see their playful side. Oh, 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 oh.
Not all the bull. <laughs> there are certain things you expect to see when you're around dogs. Now a dog is have to have to use the restroom from time to time. What you don't see often is a camera being used as a fire hydrant. <laughs> oh, you need a tire. No, I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> what what happened, Cody? He's he's marking his territory on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you get a harness on? Alright. So everything's single stitched except for this part that we have to fold in half. Okay. To keep the dogs from getting overworked, Michelle helped us harness up a second group of dogs to take Casey on her sledding adventure. Okay. One foot goes on one side, one foot goes on the other. Give me a little paw. Good job! <laughs> Good job! Come here. Give me this one. There you go. Yay! You slide it right over his Like this? Yep. Okay. Slide it right over his head. Okay, right here? Yep. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, oh hi. Yeah. You got Oh, yeah. Come here, come on this side. Give him some water. Give him some water. It's kind of furry. Okay. It's all right. See, and then legs go through uh -huh. here? Yeah. Okay. Hey, baby. Good job. Good job. Oh, you're a pro at this. You're a pro at this. <laughs> he has a crush on And based off of the noise level, I'd say the dogs were pretty excited. My name is Sarah and this is my story. I grew up in a broken family, um, one of three, the oldest. We were very poor. Um, while my parents were still married, I remember days where my mom had to borrow toilet paper from her boss or all we had to eat was raisins, that kind of thing. Um, but we played a lot and we had a good time, my brothers and I, so we learned to pretend because you, you make do with what you have, so we did that. I think part of coming from a broken family is you don't really know where to go to to find the approval and the acceptance you need. As a, a child growing up, needing a father and not really being able to find one, and so you look to other sources. Mine would be acceptance of men. I remember um, flirting with many, many young men and I ended up falling for one in high school and um, I really strongly felt that he wasn't God's will for me. But I told God one day that I chose him. And I went down that road and got married. Had three wonderful, beautiful babies. Um, but while I was pregnant with my third one, uh, the marriage wasn't so good. Um, it was falling apart by that time. I uh, just remember the summer was about 11 years ago, 11 and a half years ago. In the summer, things were really falling apart. My um, husband at the time wasn't there very much at all. It was more like a hotel. He came and he slept and he left. And I was there to raise the two girls. And then in October, um, I started to notice a lot of bruising. So I went to the doctors and I said to you know, my husband at the time, I said, um, please remind me to ask the doctor about the bruising. 
And he's like, oh, the doctor's going to think I beat you. And I said, we, we both don't know that's not true, so let's just get it checked out because it was worrisome to me because all I did was, you know, romp around on the floor with the kids and I shouldn't have bruises in awkward places. So uh, we talked to the doctor about it and he said, well, standard procedure, we'll just do a test. And that test um, led to a lot of phone calls from the doctor later that evening. Uh, I was at church and I really felt like it was kind of an attack not to be there that day. So I... I was going to go to church anyway, even though I wasn't feeling well, and I went and I got several calls. The doctor left the pager number, the hospital number, the emergency room, you know, every number he could think of to leave me to get a hold of him, and it ended up with uh, getting my mom out of church that evening and going to the doctors, and they said, well, your test results aren't so good. We're going to run them again, and uh, that test result didn't come back so good, so I was taken to Lansing by ambulance that evening where um, it was discovered that I had leukemia while being for almost full-term pregnant with my son. Um, at that time, um, I found out that I had six weeks left to live and um, I had probably about two months left of the pregnancy. So we had to make a decision and it was a very difficult time because I had to decide between my life or my son's. And that was a very hard choice, but I had peace. Because growing up, I knew that God had things for me to do. And I hadn't done them yet, not all of them. And going to Africa <laughs> and doing missions there hadn't been done yet, so I couldn't go. So I had peace and security knowing that I was gonna make it through it. Um, so going through that <laughs> and having to make that choice, um, I had to choose to be also a parent to the two children that were living. So we had to choose to get the chemo while I was pregnant with my son. Prayed every moment, every day we had people around the world praying and um, he made it through it. And um, one of the biggest things I guess I would say is I had a dream before and there were two babies being born. And one was a girl and she was small and sickly and the other was a boy and he was big and healthy and happy. And um, we did a ultrasound and when they finally told us it was a boy, I knew everything was going to be okay, that God said that this boy's going to be happy, he's going to be healthy and he's going to be safe. And so we went through that. And he came and he was big and happy and healthy, which he still is today. Just had his 11th birthday. And it's so exciting to see him every day and it's a constant reminder of God's gift um, because both of us shouldn't be here and here we are today. So going through a divorce and cancer at the same time was really, really difficult. Um, Feeling like going through like a broken heart at the same time as dealing with a disease was almost overwhelming and it was like I had to deal with everything all at once. It came from all sides. And so dealing with that, God brought a lot of healing, a lot of wholeness, um, reminded me of dreams, you know, since forgotten, you know, at that point and um, brought me back to a full place with Him. Uh, one of the things that he taught me to do while I was going through it was to let him be God and be everything that I need. So when I was feeling broken and lonely, all right, Lord, I need a husband today. I need somebody to stand there by me. Okay, finances, I don't have it, Lord. I, I need help paying the bills this month. And it was always so bizarre to me because even though I'd write it all down and in my eyes, there was not enough to make it. At the end of the month, I had a surplus because <laughs> my God is big enough and He was exactly everything that I needed and more. He paid my bills. <laughs> I mean, I did my part. I went to work and I worked hard. But at the end of the month, there was money where there shouldn't be. You know, I, I didn't feel lonely. I felt joy when I shouldn't have joy. You know, it was, it's just so great when I think about it. The amount of I guess, influence he has on my life, you know, and I, cancer free, 10 years, and my son is 11, and 
<laughs> amazing. Growing like a weed. And everything's good. Everything's great. had a blast dog sledding, but we were freezing. So we were insanely happy when we found a bonfire right outside our bungalow. Once we warmed up, we went to get ready for our newest experience, snowshoeing. I love a good pair of shoes, but snowshoes, whole different ball game. Yeah, just like I told you. <laughs> the worst possible thing that could ever happen in snowshoeing is for the oh. backs to come off. I put it on the wrong foot. They give you sit down, then stand up, then sit down, stand up. Aerobics. It is aerobics. This is um slightly harder than it looked. Maybe. Okay. Snowshoeing. Crazy. It's like having size 30 feet and trying to go as fast as you can in the snow. <laughs> uh, snowshoeing lesson 101. If you're gonna go running, pick up the toe. So we know what happens when you don't tighten it properly. It comes off. But you know, I think if it had not fallen off, Casey totally would have taken that race. Thanks for the help. You're welcome. Okay, all right. <sighs> What can we learn from the life of this Proverbs 31 woman? Well, for starters, she doesn't live a life that needs to be intimidating or we feel like if we cannot live up to these standards that we automatically fail. This passage is given to you, to me, by our Heavenly Father as a guideline to live this godly life. He wants us to do well. He wants us to succeed. He wants us to be blessed and be a blessing to others. And that's what this is. This is just a heavenly father extending his hand toward his daughters, giving us a way to live life. What I encourage you to do is pray about this passage and see how it applies to your own life. Because whether it's a thousand years ago or today, God's love and his guidelines haven't changed. So if we follow not just Proverbs 31, but the Bible as a whole, we're all gonna be just fine. Snowshoeing. Fun. Yes. But you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta, gotta really put your your muscles, muscles into it. That's what it takes. When you are strapping them on, because if you don't, 
they will fall off. <laughs> Your heel just right out. And, uh, and it will make for some fun times. All right. Well, onward. like I imagined. <laughs> That's the truth. I imagined so, it a little differently. I think yeah. we're getting the hang of it though. I think we did really well. Right? We lost our balance there for a little bit. I went one way, she went another. I'm not quite sure what happened. It, it, you know, any anybody could fall. But sometimes yeah. you fall and you learn from your mistakes. But every time you fall, you get back up, right? That's right. I'm gonna help myself up. <laughs> The more I do this show, the more I realize how important friendships are in our lives. I have some of the best friends, and Casey being with me on this road trip is incredible. She's always somebody that I can laugh with, that I can share my heart with, and that I can goof off with. And we have a lot of fun on this show. And really, that's what life's about. It's about having fun, and it's about sharing that fun with people around you. In all of life's adventures, the ups and the downs, knowing that you have a friend who will be there to laugh with you, to cry with you, to pick you up when you fall, it means everything in the world. <laughs> 